Ooh, what a message. What an incredible message we have here. God is shining through us. It's the most amazing truth that I've ha- heard in my whole, it changed my whole life. And, and I heard it very early on. And I wonder if every child heard that God is shining through them into this world in an amazing way, in a perfect expression that only you can bring into this world. You. We need you. God is you. We need you to show up as your true self. The most incredible thing is that it's possible, and we have examples of it. Like in Jess's meditation, we have examples that Jesus was the Son of God, Buddha, Muhammad, and all of you. That you are the sons and daughters of the Most High. That's who you really are. It's time to stop playing small, that we don't have any power, that we don't have any ability to shine that light. If you heard the message from last week, you know exactly how to do it now. Let the same mind that was in Christ Jesus be in you. It's a manner of thinking. Let the same mind, the same type of thinking that he was using. It's not that he was special. It's just that it was his time to experience that perfect divine nature that he is and was and will always be. And that's what you are and will always be. And when we can let go of all the other thoughts about ourselves, that's when God will be so amazing shining through you. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Speaking to me from within my own consciousness. So we have uh, been studying the five principles of unity this last week, and especially Saturday, last Saturday and Monday during our membership class, which we will announce later who our 12 new members are. Yes, we had an incredible turnout. So in the second principle of unity, we've been studying that the Christ spirit dwells in you that each and every human being have a spark of divinity within them, the Christ spirit within. And their very essence, your very essence, is of God. And therefore, you are also inherently good. And if that's true, then what are we doing What are we doing to ourselves? Have you looked around the world? Have you looked at all the things human beings do to one another? And how? And we just feel so guilty about it that none of us can go, yeah, I've I've been doing that. You know, I'm sorry. Let's do something new. Let's do something different. No, we say, I didn't do it. (laughs) Was the first thing you said when you were a kid and you got into trouble with your parents? (laughs) I didn't do it. (laughs) And if you had brothers and sisters, you'd go, He did it. I I remember like, you know, eating ice cream right out of the ice cream container. Like just before dinner, I got the whole ice cream container and I'm eating it with a big spoon and, you know, and are you eating the ice cream? No. You know, like you just feel so guilty for just being yourself, for just being here. We never progress if we deny that we need help. We'll never progress if we deny that we're mistaken about ourselves. We'll never accept that the Christ Spirit lives within us if we're continually denying that we need that Christ Spirit. Oh, well, you know, I'm fine the way I am. No, you're not. (laughs) Look at this world, please. Look at what's going on. And look at the demonstrations that we have of something different. That's, that's where all this spiritual path has come from. Oh, somebody did something different. Somebody actually transcended 
the laws of this world. Somebody discovered that they were the Christ. So we talk about that word a lot in unity, and we want to know what it is. So I have some answers to this question. Pretty basic, historical, look in the dictionary kind of answers. Here we go. In the Hebrew, it's the Messiah, or the Anointed One. In, in ancient times, they would anoint kings and royalty and rulers and priests with oil. And they'd, they'd give them the power to pass along uh, judgment and guidance to the people, whatever. They would give them the power by anointing them. They'd do a, a ceremony of anointing. But the Christ is actually a very specific anointing. It's the anointing of God, the anointing of the Spirit. And of course, we were waiting for that one to come and be the Messiah, to be the chosen anointed of God, to lead us into all knowledge, to be the perfect man, to be the demonstration. And when he showed up, we said, oh, it's not him. Or we say, it's only him, which is even more dangerous. It's no one else. And that places personality above principle. In fact, we take anointed one and we bring it from the Hebrew to the Greek. It's called Christos, or in Latin, Christus. And that's where we get Christ. But it means anointed one, but anointed by God. Don't you feel whenever you have like a real true spiritual experience that something happens? The Spirit comes upon you. I had it in our prayer in in the office earlier. Had it when Jess was doing the meditation. Whenever I receive a Reiki treatment, whenever I receive a true healing, I feel an anointing of the Spirit. That's what our prayer is meant to bring about, is anointing, a real experience of the Spirit within. And of course, we want to stay in that as much as we possibly can. So in English... It's become this word, Christ. But Christ is principle, not personality. We have put personality above principle. So now there's somebody special who's been ordained by this great mind in the sky. You, Wes, will be the Christ. Paula? No, I don't know. Not you. (laughs) This guy here. Right? Because he's in my religion. He's... He's in my political party. I like him better. You know, I don't like so I'm going to anoint you. <laughs> That's idolatry, my friends. We've been in idolatry. We've been idolizing. And we've been placing this idol up on a mountain and not within our own consciousness, closer than our own breath, something we can access each and every moment. Yes, we have a way shower. We have a brother, Jesus, that we can talk to that will help us. But that part of our consciousness is a way of thinking. It's the mind that was in Jesus. Let that mind be in you. You know, it's all through the Bible, all of these spiritual directions, all these directions to accessing the Christ spirit within So it's principle, not personality. Jesus is a historic person. He was a person just like you, just like me. Just like you. Exactly like you. Exactly. What's the difference? He became identified and aware of the divine principle of the indwelling spirit. And he said, God is my father. Right? I'm not from here. No, this is not my kingdom. My kingdom is not of this world. And if that's true, if I actually have ascend, descended from heaven, then I will ascend to heaven. In Revelations, the prophet saw the angels of God descending and ascending to heaven, coming down and going up. There's a free flow of energy from heaven to earth. There's a free flow of energy. You're the only one who decides 
to limit that energy, to limit that conscious contact with God. But the Christ in you is always in contact. Always. It's never turned off. Do you feel that sometimes, that it's just always connected? No matter what I think, no matter what I do, no matter what I, no matter what I think is going on out here, I can always come back to experience that pure contact with the source. Father, Mother, Divine Spirit, source of all there is. So the, the thing that I find most interesting is that this man became aware of the indwelling spirit. And so we called him Jesus Christ. Now, was, this, was it Mary and Joseph Christ that had a baby Jesus? <laughs> no, I mean, so that's what we think. Oh, it's his last name, Jesus Christ, you know. And then we say this guy, you know, we give him an image that we like. You know, so we kind of, as white people, kind of identify with white skin and maybe blue eyes and blonde hair. And so we get these photos and we, and we pray to these photos of this white guy, you know. <laughs> Now, Yeshua ben Joseph from Nazareth was not white. (laughs) He didn't speak English. (laughs) But he did have an experience of the indwelling Christ in him, a man who embodied that Christ principle and said, okay, my father is spirit, is of heaven. I am more than this. And he went about and demonstrated that he is more than this. And he became Christ Jesus, the perfected being ascended fully into identification with God. You can ascend right now in your mind, in your heart, to full identification with spirit. Become Christ Penny. (laughs) Christ Jesus, Christ Penny, Christ West, Christ George. George built this beautiful thing here. The altar. Only the Christ could do that. (laughs) Jesus said George was a better carpenter than him anyway. (laughs) Right. He's got a lot more tools these days. So full identification with God is what the Christ is the ascended Christ in you. Allow that Christ to ascend in you, in your consciousness. No matter what has been happening and what's occurred in your life, it's brought you to this moment. This moment is the moment that I have to decide how I want to view myself, how I want my world to be. Do I want it to be manifested from the perfect divine law of love? Do I really, or am I just saying these prayers because they sound good? No, I have a necessity. I have an inborn necessity as a human being to transcend in my mind this condition in which I find myself, this condition of separation, this condition of judgment. I need a new way of thinking, and that thinking is found. (laughs) <laughs> through the activity of acknowledging a power in me that's greater than myself, greater than my personality. It's found in the principle. That's why we like to look at God as principle, as Christ, as principle. The principle of the indwelling spirit. I would like to, I have all these books and I read them all week, and I get here, and I forget everything I read, because I'm so excited. I'm like Sharon. I'm so excited. Every, is there more? There is more. The more is right here, and don't be afraid of this metaphysical Bible dictionary. She loves that book. Now, that's why I'm, I hang around with you guys. Only guys like you would love a book like this. Look at this thing. It's defined every term, every person, every word, every phrase, 
of the Bible and probably every other word that I could possibly think of. And that's why I love it. It keeps expanding my mind. The Christ is the anointed or the Messiah. The name or title applied to Jesus of Nazareth. Jehovah of the Old Testament is the I am of Christ or Christ of God invisible. I love this. The Messiah is the promise of the visible manifestation of the I am or Christ. And Jesus is the fulfillment in man of that original spiritual I am. It's the visible representation of the invisible I am. What what did Moses find out? What did he discover when he went searching for God? What God was, the meaning of God? I am. I am that I am. Not just I am visible, but I am that. Invisible I am. I am that source. I am that spirit. That's what I am. And the Christ is nothing more than the full experience of that in you. You're experiencing the I am in you, becoming visible. It has to be. Because if it doesn't happen to you, you won't believe it. You'll say, wow, are you the Christ? No, I didn't do it. It was him. <laughs> right? No, I'm not. To. It's like, remember the story last week that I told you of finding the boy and the voice was telling me, you're the one, you're going to find it. I said, no, I'm not. <laughs> and the voice for God within me kept saying, the, the Christ spirit within me kept saying, you are the one. And I would keep saying, I think you're mistaken. <laughs> Someone else is much more qualified for this job. And it was true that I was the one that was supposed to find that boy. And it is true that you were the one that is supposed to look at this slide. (laughs) The name of Jesus. Okay. His original name is Yeshua. Isn't that nice? Say that with me. Yeshua. Isn't that beautiful? Yeshua. I love that. So I'm sure he had his doubts too when they said, you're the Messiah, you're the Christ, you are the son of the living God. And he would say, well, I don't know. Maybe there's someone more qualified. (laughs) You don't think he had doubts? You don't think he went through the same process that you do? And when he said that, maybe it's someone else. They said, it's not me? He'd say, Yes, you are. Yeshua. That's where we get his name. (laughs) That's my version. (laughs) Well, I'm from New England. I'm your your spiritual leader. All right. (laughs) So whenever anyone tells you from now on that you are not the son of the living God, the Holy One, the Christ itself, you say, yes, I am. And yes, you are too. (laughs) The Christ, a perfect man, is an idea existing eternally in divine mind. Again, from the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary. It's an idea. How do you like that? It's it's the divine idea that holds all other ideas. The divine idea of Christ holds all the divine ideas of God. It exists eternally in divine mind and is the true spiritual higher self of every individual. Each of us has within him the Christ, just as Jesus had. The cosmic man, the grand man of the universe, often referred to by religious mystics, is the Christ. And the Christ is the higher self of man. And we do not realize this cosmic man. Why? Because we've not found our real selves. 
That's the whole message of the spiritual awakening. The shared movement of our spiritual awakening is to awaken to who we are. We don't experience the Christ within because we have not found ourselves. We don't have an experience of ourselves as divine. We keep insisting that we are not. And of course, the Spirit keeps saying, Yes, you are. <laughs> and in fact, this idea was Charles Fillmore's favorite idea of the Bible. His favorite scripture was from Colossians 1.27, which is, the Christ in you is the hope of glory. The Christ in you is the hope of glory. I looked up the word glory because I wanted to get a, a clear understanding of what glory is. Glory is realization of divine unity. It's the blending and merging of man's mind with God mind. It's how, it's the process. It's how our minds merge and blend with God, God mind. It's how we let that mind which was in Christ Jesus be in us. It's through our glory. When Jesus prayed in John 17, he said, Father, the time has come. Glorify thou me with thine own glory, the glory I had with thee before the world was made. That can be our prayer. That can be our focus, our intention to allow the divine realization of the Christ in us to come to us. If it's what we want, we'll begin to see it. We'll begin to experience it. We'll begin to experience ourselves as the Christ more and more. And you are the perfect Christ. You can't relegate it to one person and not have it be you. That was the whole beauty of it. And if you look at, at all at, at quantum physics these days, you'll see that we all share the same stuff, the same molecules, the same atoms, the same energy, the same thought patterns. It's all connected. And so we can't experience anything alone. Anything I experience, everyone will experience, even if they're not aware of it. That's why it's really up to you, just to keep on your spiritual path. Do not allow the voice inside you to say, it's not me. I'm, there's no way I'm going to do that. Because we're going to say, yes, you are. <laughs> That's what we're going to always say. And I'm going to eventually eliminate all the R's from my vocabulary. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's inevitable. I might as well cooperate with the inevitable, right? <laughs> That's the one thing. When I moved back here, I said, I'm not going to speak like I grew up in New England. And everyone said, <laughs> yes, you are. Oh, believe in yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I refuse. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> I love you guys. Thank you. So the glory. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I'm not going to read any more of these things. You're going to have to come to class. What I'm going to do instead is sing you a song. Thank you so much. I want to sing you a song because, hold on. Am I on? Yes, you are. You forgot your line already? <laughs> All right. You are the second coming 
of Christ. You are the second coming of Christ. Why are you waiting for Jesus? He has already come. Now it's your turn to return to the one, to the one, to the one. You are the second coming. You are the second coming. You are the second coming. Forget who you think you are Forget who you think you know Now is the time to return Just let go, just let go, just let go Yes, you are the second coming. You are the second coming of Christ. Forget who you think you are. Forget what you think you know. Now is your time to return. Just let go, just let go, just let go. You are the second coming. You are the second coming. You are the second coming of Christ. You have been watching the message from our Sunday celebration service here at Unity on Cape Cod, providing a positive path for spiritual living. Please join us every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. at 147 Walton Ave, Hyannis, Mass. And visit us online at www.unityoncapecod.org.